Hi there, I'm Ian Bragg. I'm here with Derek Rumberg. He's the educational technologist and author over at SparkFun. Derek, tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so educational technologist, the, the main thing that I do is take um, the hardware that's in our catalog and kind of what we want to teach and, and figure out where that all fits into the K-12 spectrum of education. Um, and then I write content around it and produce professional development around it for teachers. That sounds good. Well, speaking of producing content, what do you have for us today? Yeah, so today we're going to take a look at um, what this is. So this is basically, this is our version of an Arduino. So it's a, our red clone of an Arduino 101. And this, for those of you that already know about it, it's, we're recapping, but those of you that don't, this is what's called a microcontroller. And you can think of it as a robot brain. And all of this circuitry here is there so that this thing can function. And you can see that it has small, tiny little legs. And if we were to try to use this by itself, it'd be really, really hard to. We would need a lot of experience, electrical engineering, things like that. So what Arduino does is it breaks it out into these pin headers here, to make it a lot easier to use, hook sensors and actuators up to it, things like that. So that uh, essentially is what an Arduino is. It can be powered uh, via battery or uh, a barrel jack from a, a wall plug-in, and then you upload code to it or instructions to it via USB. Sounds good. Now, <clears throat> that compared to an Arduino 101, what are the differences? Ah, perfect. So, first of all, the Arduino 101 is a joint project between Arduino and Intel. So it's an Arduino that uses the Intel Kiri chip here, mm -hmm. um, which brings a, a pretty big strength to the board. So it, it adds um, a six degrees of freedom board, or six degrees of freedom, so an accelerometer and gyroscope to be able to detect motion and gestures, a real-time clock, so that just like your alarm clock at home, uh, you can program it a time and then it will keep track of time. And then it also brings Bluetooth low energy, so we can hook this up to your phone or your laptop or even other 101s and have them talk to each other. That makes sense. So how do these two compare to each other? Uh, so the red board, if we took the red board and we had to add parts to it to bring it up to what you could do with the 101, you'd have the red board mm -hmm. and then you would add Bluetooth. Well, wow. then you would add six degrees of freedom mm -hmm. and then a real time clock. So we'd have to add a bunch of modules to the red board. Making it way bigger. Making it bigger, making it a pretty technical hookup, and then it also costs more in the long run. There you go. And you want things to be cost efficient, especially for the classroom, right? Yeah. And in fact, the, the hookup and keeping everything compact is more important in the classroom, even more than the cost. That makes sense, for yeah. sure. So speaking of the classroom, um, how can you integrate this into the classroom? So. When the Arduino 101 came out, one of the ideas was to put it into a kit to get people started. Okay. So if we grab this kit here, so this is the Arduino 101 SIK, or SparkFun Inventors Kit. Uh, it's essentially our SparkFun Inventors Kit, our flagship kit that would normally have our Redboard in it, but we dropped in a 101. So if you buy this for the States, you'll get an Arduino 101. Uh, if you're international, you'll get a Genuino 101. Uh, and then all of the parts, you need motors, a breadboard, USB cable, batteries and a battery pack, everything you need to get started and it comes with a 21 circuit or an experiment experiment guide. That sounds great. Cool. So how, um, how can you give me an example of how we'd actually combine these into something? So if you're a teacher, the first thing I would kind of have you start doing would be think about walking through the experiments with your, with your students. Mm -hmm. um, maybe do experiment one and experiment two together and then think with your students about what projects could you build with that experience. Okay. So an, an example here is actually, this is my five minute robot. Oh, it's great. So this is the Arduino 101, two <coughs> motors and a motor driver which comes in the kit. And what this is, is it's, it's a piece of cardboard modified it into a robot and so it literally is five minutes of construction uh, and then you can work with your students to teach them about motor controls and how to get this robot moving in terms of its basic movements mm -hmm. and then extend that knowledge into 
how do I control this from my phone now with, with Bluetooth through, through my phone? Mm -hmm. I'm building their own remote controls that way. And racing around the classroom, that kind of stuff. And I mean, straight off the table. Straight off the table, yeah. That's probably going to happen the first run, of course. Yep. So speaking of that, is it like an app that goes on your phone? Are there apps that go along with this? So there's a, a couple of apps that we use for controlling this um, that we use in the guide. Um, they're all free. And then one of the really cool ones out there is actually the Google Science Journal app. Um, so that Google came out with that to be able to use your phone for some physics experiments, things like that. And it actually has a, a Bluetooth plug-in so that you can hook up an Arduino 101 to it and use other sensors. So oh. we've actually developed a separate kit for that. You can also upload the firmware to any Arduino 101 and use essentially the kit with it. That sounds great. And you know, given this is an Intel product, are you guys working with Intel in any certain way? Yeah, we've worked with Intel in a number of different ways. Um, we've been a professional development provider for them um, as we go out and deal with teachers in the classroom, but also they've localized some content for us. So the guide is now in um, French, Chinese, and Spanish. Um, so if you have students that are that know those languages, they can read it in their, their native language. Or if you're a teacher that's in one of those countries, you can have um, some Arduino content that is localized for you. That sounds great. So uh, I've also seen when you register there's some sort of giveaway here. Can you kind of give me a little more about that? Yeah, so if you formally register for this webinar as well as the, the in-person vet workshop next week, um, your name will be dropped into a hat and we'll pick at random somebody that will win a lab pack of these kits. Uh, and the lab pack is 10 SIKs and some spare parts So because we all know that students lose things and break things. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's something to look forward to. That sounds great. So speaking of that, you're being you're gonna be there next week, right? Yes. So I'm gonna be in the Intel booth and answering technical questions about the Arduino 101 SIK, mm -hmm. uh, as well as giving a workshop, which I'm, I've dubbed uh, a, a circuit petting zoo. Nice, so nice. I'll work with teachers, and we'll get get some circuits and um, code working on the 101. But the, most of the big chunk of the time will be just exploring what are some of these extensions that we can do with the kit. Mm -hmm. um, the five minute robot will make an appearance. It will, yeah. ah, good to know. Sounds great for a petting zoo. Yeah. Now, um, is there anything else that you want to talk about this? Like where can I find more information just about these kits? Perfect, so more information about the kits, obviously sparkfun.com and sparkfun education. Um, but in terms of some content that you can do with this, the experiment guide is a great place, um, but also the innovation toolbox um, from Intel. So they just kind of launched that site, uh, and that has a lot of lesson plans and, and other classroom ideas to do with this. Um, and then invent.sparkfun.com is our repository of classroom activities as well. All right, all the fun things there, I'm sure. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, uh, Derek, thank you so much for your time today. Is there anything else you'd like to cover with this? we got some great fun stuff I'm here. excited to be at BET and uh, my first time in London. So. All right. Well, enjoy, man. Hey, thanks so much. Thank you.